Alright guys, welcome back. This is going to be part 3 of the OBS Comprehensive Tutorial. This section is going to be a little bit longer because there's a lot of things I want to cover and I want to provide a whole bunch of different examples because there is no one example that I can honestly give that'll fit every single person because every person has different computer specs and everybody has different internet speeds and they all play different games okay so I'm gonna try to give you the best examples that I can that are going to match each scenario so when it comes to the video settings right here you're gonna notice that it says video adapter and you're gonna see the AMD Radeon 7900 series this is my MSI 7950. All right, that is my third party graphics card that I bought and installed myself. Whatever GPU graphics card you have installed, it should automatically be displayed as an option in the drop down menu. If you're using an external capture card device, I don't it should relatively pop up under here. I can't tell you because I have I don't have an external PC capture card. I have an Elgato, okay, and that and those settings are a lot different. Um, so if it's not there, you may want to do a little bit of Google research on that. Now below that, you're going to see the base resolution. Mine says 1920 by 1080. I have a 24 inch monitor, and that's my normal default resolution is 1080p. This might be different depending on what size monitor you have and or whatever resolution you are using, okay. Now, below that, you also have the resolution downscale. So what is the resolution downscale? This option is pretty much you telling Twitch, hey, man, I want to stream at 1080p. I want to stream at 720p, OK? Uh, and if you click on the drop down menu, you're going to see a whole bunch of different resolutions. This gives you the options to stream at whatever resolution you want. You got 360. Please don't stream at 360. Don't even stream below 480. Just don't. A lot of people nowadays when it comes to streaming services, the gaming department is very saturated. So quality becomes very important. You may not keep viewers, you may not keep followers at 480p. I hate to say it, but it happens. You can have a great personality, you can be very interactive, but if people can't watch your stream and doesn't look good, they're not going to stick around. Okay, um, but you do have multiple options here, and for the most part, you're not going to be streaming at 1080. If you have the hardware to do it, fantastic, that's freaking awesome. However, if you stream at 1080p, you run the risk of losing potential viewers. I say this because you streaming at 1080p are making the assumption that everybody has fantastic internet and good download speeds. The higher the resolution, the more bandwidth is going to be needed in order to watch it without stuttering or skipping frames or whatnot, okay? And that's just not on your end. That's on their end. So try not to stream at 1080. Even Twitch themselves even don't really recommend anybody to stream at 1080. Um, most Twitch partners will stream at 720, and it's perfectly fine, guys. Don't, don't worry about that. I mean, 1080, you're going above and beyond. Some people do it. Some people don't. I don't recommend it. Um, for the most part, though, I prefer 720. That's exactly what I stream in. And just to keep this in mind, guys, when you change the resolution downscale, this does not, I repeat, does not change the resolution on your monitor, and it does not change the resolution in the game you're playing. This only outputs the resolution on Twitch to 720p. Okay? So don't think it's going to freak anybody out <laughs> now below that you have the filter the filter is nice because it gives you a couple different options here bilinear fastest would be preferred in terms of FPS games why because you have a lot of fast-paced graphics and action explosions and all this other stuff that's going on and you want to make sure that you have very few or very little pixelation if you don't know what pixelation is there are a bunch of little squares, little blocks that pop up on the screen. They don't look crisp. The quality looks like it's tearing. It just, it looks very bad, right? Um, so if you play a lot of FPS games or fast paced games, whatever's going on, racing, etc., keep it at, you know, bilinear fastest. Um, there are exceptions to this, of course. If you have a separate computer specifically for streaming, then screw it go for you know the best detail 
Um, if you're playing, if, if you don't, which a lot of people don't have separate computers, they only have one computer that they game and stream on, then don't, don't overdo your CPU, man. Just take it easy. It's okay. Um, if you're playing games like RTSs, MOBAs, card games, whatever you're playing that does not have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on, then you can kind of go for like the Bicubic or the Langskos, um, and that just kind of redefines the graphics, you know, making those details a little bit sharper, uh, makes it look a little bit better. Now, this doesn't necessarily have an impact on your CPU as much, uh, but it can. OK, so just kind of keep that in mind. Um, what will have an impact on your CPU is the frame rate. So obviously this by default is set to 30. Don't change it any lower because if you, you wouldn't want to play a video game under 30 frames per second, okay? So why the hell would you want to stream it at anything less than 30? Um, if you change this value to 60, okay? You want to stream your gameplay at 720p, 60 frames per second. That's fantastic, okay? But here's the thing you have to keep in mind. You're gonna need a little more bandwidth in terms of upload to make sure that that, out, that that content is being uploaded quick enough and that your computer's able to render it fast enough so it doesn't look blotchy, it doesn't look pixelated, it doesn't look like, you know, all it looks horrible, right? And you also have to take into account that your CPU can handle it, okay? This is very, very, very important. You don't want anything bottlenecking whatsoever. Streaming by itself is very CPU intensive, okay? So before you decide whether or not you're able to run at 60 frames, a lot of people play at 30. The stream still looks great. You're not going to lose viewers over it. Okay. But in order, before you decide whether or not you can run at 60, you need to know how much CPU usage you're using for the game that you're currently playing by itself. Okay. I have a i7 4790K. Okay, I'm going to open my task manager here. So with my i7, I mainly play Battlefield 4. All right. Battlefield 4 can by itself, just the one process can be about 30 to 40 percent. Okay. If I'm streaming at 720, I'm already asking my processor to do a little more work. Okay. So I think it. 7, 20, 30 frames per second, I can probably push 60% of my CPU. But if I change this value to 60 per, uh, to sixty frames per second, I'm pushing this sucker to about 80. Yes, that happens. It can go to 80, okay? So you have to keep in mind and be very aware of where your CPU usage is at, your CPU usage is at, and make sure that the game you're playing can handle streaming at the same time. If you start to see like warnings like high CPU usage or it's starting to bottleneck, you're getting stuttering, you're probably going to want to turn this down. Okay. But like I said, 30 frames per second is absolutely acceptable. Okay. If you're just don't even worry about it. So let me go ahead and close that. Now, because I mentioned before, anything you change in OBS has to be saved. Make sure you hit apply. And now we can go on to the encoding section.